Which one? Which one? It's it's a lure swan? Oh god. <laughs> Which one? Today I want to focus on the new tracker. It's started rolling out to a lot more parts of the world. Most of the US, I think the entire continental US has it. Uh, large parts of Europe have it. So a lot of people are getting access to this and a lot of people really have a lot to say about it. So the way it works is it shows you Pokemon near Pokestops. It's pretty useless for finding Pokemon that are actually around you. I mean, look at that. That's a huge cluster of Pokemon. None of them would show on nearby. It looks like there's Pokestops across the street down that way. So if I were to track one of these, hit the footsteps, and it'll show me this Meowth is near that Pokestop. I'm assuming that most of these Pokemon, most of these Pokestops are over in that same area. So if there was something that I really wanted to find among these nine Pokemon, let's say I really want an Eevee. It's cool because I can go actually find exactly where that Eevee is, but look at how far away that is. I mean, it's a lot of walking involved to get there, definitely. One of the biggest complaints with this new tracker, or this new nearby system, is that you can't see what's actually around you unless you're standing on a Pokestop. First catch of the day, nice. It's especially useless for rural players who don't have any Pokestops near them. When the nearest Pokestop is at least 500 meters away, sometimes up to one kilometer is what I've heard. It'll show you the one Pokemon that happens to be near that Pokestop a kilometer away from where you are, but it doesn't tell you anything about Pokemon that might be closer than that. Pokemon that might be actually in your neighborhood or spawning right in front of you like this. Every time Niantic announces that they're rolling out the tracker to more areas, they always say that they're still listening to our feedback. So here's some feedback. Give us the option to switch between nearby and sightings. When they originally started beta testing the new tracker in San Francisco months ago, it would show both. The top six Pokemon would be nearby, it would show you Pokemon near Pokestops, and the bottom three would be sightings, so you could still have some idea of what's around you, even if they're not near Pokestops. When they started rolling the tracker out to more areas, that disappeared. It's only nearby now. It's only Pokemon near Pokestops. Thank you. I need to eat this. But we'll continue this later. We'll keep talking about the tracker in a second, but I have some eggs hatching. <laughs> I literally set Porygon as my buddy yesterday to try to get more Porygon candies for Gen 2's release. And I finally hatch a Porygon. Weird. What else? I don't think anything's gonna top that. Unless I get Lickitung right now. Ghastly, that's actually good too. Gengar is a very strong attacker now. Where are the IVs on this? Nice. 107 candies. I'm close to another one too. Might actually get Shadow Claw Shadow Ball. Krabby. Star you. I mean, again, Star me. Strongest water type offensively. That's not exciting at all. I have nothing good to say about that. Alright, that's it. Oh my god. Alright, we need to go. What? I can't even get there. How do I get there? Yeah, let's go. Is this in someone's store? <laughs> it's it's back where we were. Okay. So this is like the one good thing about this new nearby system is that when you see something like that that you really want, you know exactly where to go. And it's kind of far. I don't know what the timer is on it, but we're going to go. Oh, there's these bags thingies, poly bags. Okay, but... Oh, yeah, sorry. sorry. There's also... A Charizard. A Charizard. It's not close, it's not walking distance. We have to get in the car to go get it. So if you were playing on foot, this might not be that helpful. I mean, I guess 
you could walk it. It's just kind of a far walk. It would probably only take about 10 minutes, but spawn timers usually last for 30. If we got here within the last 10 minutes of this, then it's no good. It's inside the movie theater, so we're gonna park. This is not the way that I like to hunt Pokemon, really, but I guess this is what the new tracker, uh, this is the way you play now. Okay. I don't know if we're gonna be able to get inside without buying a ticket. We'll see what we can do. Say we want to go play at the arcade. Yep. <laughs> Just go play an arcade game. Oh, there it is. Oh, you got him there? Yeah. He's in, probably in here, Addy. He's oh, no, it's out there. It's yeah, out there. That way. One more over there? Yeah. Okay, walk over there, guys. Sorry. It's okay. I just keep running. I keep running. They're looking forward to. Yeah. Alright. What's yours? Mine sucks. What? Yours sucks? 347. Oh, yes. Alright, let's go. Alright, so, 36 <laughs> CP Charizard. This will be cool for my level 1 collection, I guess. But, I don't know. This is like the one redeeming factor, the one redeeming quality of the new tracker and yeah, we found this right they oh my god <laughs> wing attack fire blast it's the best move set for charizard in terms of raw dps um, it's great against grass types unfortunately it has 36 cp but this is the one, the one thing about this nearby system that's kind of okay. I don't know how I really feel about stopping what I'm doing, getting in the car, and then driving over here just to get this. I would much rather know what's in my immediate area, what's close by, what I can actually walk to. But, look at this. I know. <laughs> how much do we want to spend on this? Like, how many tries do you really think it's going to take? I don't know, like I'm five, just going to do $10. Okay, $10. Thank you! complete waste of ten dollars. These things are rigged. I mean I knew that to begin with. Wait what? Really? Yeah. It sucks. Life tip right here. Crane games, stacker, all those arcade games like that where hey, you win prizes. I won stacker like the first time though. You got lucky. Here's how it works. <laughs> They're rigged so that they don't actually let you win until enough money has been put into the machine for them to make a profit. And you can actually set how much money needs to be in the machine before it will let someone win. True story, you got lucky. You happened to get there at the right time. That whole experience has me thinking about sponsored Pokestops. There was a leak a while back, a supposed email from Niantic or to some company, saying that with sponsored Pokestops, you also have the option of having certain Pokemon spawn at your sponsored Pokestops. Now, I'm not gonna say that's what happened here. We weren't at a sponsored Pokestop. There are some Union Bank sponsored Pokestops nearby. I'm not sure where the Union Bank actually is, but oh, there's the Union Bank. 
But it is possible with this new system for Niantic to give sponsors the option of having certain Pokemon spawn at their Pokestops. And that's going to bring, obviously, it brought us to the movie theater. We just spent $10 trying to win Pokemon stuff in a rigged claw game. So there's definitely a, a business opportunity here with this new tracker, which is brilliant for Niantic and... You're really upset about that, aren't you? Yeah, I could have got four Pokeballs. I don't want it to seem like I think that this new tracker is completely financially motivated. I really don't think that's the big reason behind making the switch. This is interesting. It's only showing Paris near this one Pokestop here, but I also see Sandshrew and Rhyhorn on the small preview. I don't know where Sandshrew and Rhyhorn are, but they're not showing. Bug, maybe, or maybe it's some feature of the new tracker that we don't fully understand yet. I just want to jump in here really quick to say that the way this works is when there's less than three Pokemon showing on the nearby, the rest of those spots on the little preview tracker fill in with Pokemon that would be listed on sightings, Pokemon that are within 200 meters of your current location. And just how sightings was never in any order, it's going to choose randomly from those Pokemon. So that's the reason I'm seeing two Pokemon here that aren't actually spawning right in front of me at the moment. Those are two Pokemon that are within 200 meters of my current location. They're just chosen randomly, and you don't see them when you open up the actual full tracker window. That's what's going on. For now, though, I'm going to say it's probably a bug. Get agave in your smoothie. So good. For whatever reason, the three-step tracker is gone. It's never coming back. I think that much is clear by now. I really think Niantic is doing their best to put out a tracker that they feel is going to be useful. Obviously, this needs some work, but I think three-step tracking is gone because they didn't like the idea of people staring at their phones as they're trying to find a Pokemon. Because really, when we had the three steps a long time ago, all you would do is stare at your phone as you walk and wait for the footsteps to change. And Niantic really doesn't want people to play that way. We know that. They've said that publicly. They have very mixed feelings about people being glued to their phones while playing their game. What they really want is for people to get out, explore, look at things, experience new things, and when you know exactly where you're going, you can just set your waypoint and walk there without having to look at your phone. We just got to Long Beach, Ben's on his way here, so we're going to be meeting him soon, but there's a Hitmonlee, what Pokestop is that? I know where it is. Alright, Hitmonlee, strongest offensive fighting type, <laughs> let's go get it. I forgot to press record, but the Hitmonlee ran for me anyway, so. Not a big deal. I think I started talking about this earlier. One of the big shortfalls of this new nearby system is that it shows you Pokemon that are very far away if there aren't any Pokestops near you. Currently it seems like that radius might be a kilometer. Up to one kilometer away it'll just show you the one Pokemon that's spawning near that Pokestop and you're completely blind to the entire kilometer inside that range. So I think one that range needs to be decreased. It should only show you Pokemon at Pokestops up to even 500 meters away is kind of a stretch. But if there is only one Pokestop around, if there are Pokestops far away from you, it should revert back to sightings. Right now, it takes way too much for you to get back to sightings. But even better than that would be two separate tabs. One for nearby, swipe to the side, and you get sightings. I've seen it suggested online, I've seen it suggested on Reddit, and it seems like a great idea. It doesn't seem like something that would be difficult to implement because Niantic did have nearby and sightings together previously. So, why not do it that way? It's empty out.
out here. Totally dead. Let's go to Johnny. Oh, where? Is here? Hey, what's up? Uh, yo. What's up, man? What's going on here? Welcome back. Thank you. I know you've been back for a little bit, but... I know. Oh I'm still, I'm pretty sure you're still, like, trying to oh, jet lag and all that. Rock this. He just threw up a pokey stop. Oh, he did? All of them? Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Not all of them, but... Oh, not all of them? How's that? Everywhere he goes. Yeah. Check it out. Bent him one. <laughs> He's out here. Hiding somewhere. He's been really dead here, but the Blappers finally came back. This week. Really? Nice. Yeah, it took a while. They were Japan all in Japan, dude. Yeah. Yeah. They were all... <laughs> they crazy. migrated back. <laughs> Oh my yeah. god, look at, look at all the skittles! Wait, dude. what? Look at that! Oh my They're all, all god! From here. Welcome to Santa Monica. Hold on, hold on. What up? What's going on? What up? Hi. So, uh, How are you doing? Johnny. Did Johnny? Ben? I'm gonna meet you. This is Carla. Hi, Carla. Nice to meet you. I've seen you guys on YouTube and stuff. Thanks, thanks. So, this is the guy, dude. talking with him. <laughs> King of the Pike right here. King of the Pike? <laughs> I'm one of them. We, there's a, we share this room. <laughs> <laughs> We're just doing our standard lap around the lighthouse. Check it out. Executor. It's kind of far away. Yeah, it's not that far. Yeah, things are spawning at such a weird rate. It's close. We'll just walk around and get it. Every lure is bent him one YouTube. Best self promotion ever. Self marketing. If you want to catch a ton of Pokemon, just follow this guy <laughs> around. Here it is. This is the second executor I found in the wild. 2114, definitely my strongest. I do have another execute that I can evolve to. So it's like executor weekend here on trainer tips. Nice. One ball. Let's check it out. Confusion Solar Beam, not bad. Zen Headbutt Solar Beam is better. But, uh, no good on the IVs, but 2,114 CP. Sweet. We just got word of a Ditto posing as a Rattata back where he caught that Executor, so we're gonna head over that way. Which one? Which one? It's, it's a lure swan? Oh, God. <laughs> Which one? Also, uh, ditto, Magikarp, but it's a lore spawn. Two dittos! <laughs> Two dittos! I guess we're doing this. Okay, it's here. Name it after Ben. We don't have a Magikarp. Just wait, it's coming. This, no, 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 I don't know. I think this is it. This is Ben's lore too, so... Thank you, Ben. I'm going Ultra Ball. You didn't get it? No. Oh. Catch it, confirm it. Let's see. But where was Let's that right? Let's see, it is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> we okay. it we walked out a little bit. It's another weak one though, 63 <laughs> as a Magikarp. It's gonna be stronger than my other one. Oh, 240, that's not bad. Sweet. That's ditto number two for me. Number three's coming up. It's a Rattata right down that way. Cassie's already there, because she's upset about missing this one. You get it? Yeah, I got it. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. They got it this is the one. 72 CP Rattata. This is going to be another weak one for me. <laughs> oh. Okay. Back to back dittos. Neither of them are spectacular. I didn't check IVs on that other one, but... <laughs> 92 CP. No good. Let me check the last one. Uh, that one's bad too. But, back to back dittos. Can't complain. I'm getting hungry. And check it out. We got the ditto parade. The ditto parade heading over this way. Ooh, 420 ponyta. I gotta catch this though. There it is. I see it. I see it. All right. 76. Here we go. Ditto spawn out here. And of course, 76 CP. Still gets an Ultra Ball and a Raspberry. Yes! <laughs> you got this one? I'm not very proud, it's only 20 CP. See the Ivy? 
cool. Two dittos. Nice. <laughs> All right, three in a row. That's crazy. 96 CP. 96, 92. 240 is my highest so far. Almost there? Almost there? Almost where, there? where, where? It's over there, <laughs> That's right back this way. Let's go get him. Yep. All right. We're heading back this way. It's crazy. This is like the best uh, Long Beach trip in a while. It's got to be because Ben's here. We brought that Midwest block. Is that a thing? I don't know. He's out here in shorts. That's probably why. This might be it. Oh, right here. Almost are? Yeah, right here. Nice. Yep. Nice. Let's see. Let's see if I get lucky with this one. 1695. I caught an Omastar really early on, like super early. I think it's 93 CP. I just held on to it because it knows rock throw, which it can't learn anymore. But water gun hydro pump. Yeah, well, let's see. Water gun rock slide. <laughs> Animal style fries. Yep. There goes Johnny on his way home, and we are going in and out because you can't come to California and not eat in and out. You cannot. We're copying Nick's order too, so it should be a good time. <laughs> Over many years and many iterations, I've perfected this order. The order, for anyone wondering, is number one with whole grilled onions. Add pickles, add mustard, fries well done, pink lemonade, and you gotta put pepper in the ketchup. It's got it down. It's got it down. Oh. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> All right, they're getting in their Uber. We're heading home. So cold. Some stuff has happened with the nearby though. They made a fix to a supposed bug. So once we get home, I'll explain that. Niantic just posted this message on the Pokemon Go Facebook page. Trainers, there was an unintended bug which limited Pokemon from appearing in the recently expanded nearby Pokemon feature. The bug that they fixed affected how the game would choose between nearby and sightings. Now, as I was saying earlier, some people were saying that the game would show them the nearby tracker even when there wasn't a Pokestop visible on their map. Now that it's been fixed, it should only be showing you nearby when there is a Pokestop visible within the draw distance of your map. I still don't think that's good enough. The draw distance isn't a perfect circle around you, so it's not the same distance all around. It's more of a rectangle, and at its farthest point, it can be almost a kilometer. So if there is a Pokestop in that one corner of your map, almost a kilometer away, you're going to see Pokemon that are spawning near that, and nothing else around you. But plenty of players who don't have Pokestops visible on their map have confirmed that Sightings has come back at that point. So it's a step in the right direction. The other thing that's exciting about this post is that they end it by saying we'll keep you updated on changes to this feature, which means they are actively working on it and refining it. So as long as we stay vocal, I'm sure it will continue to improve. So really, let's get a tab for sightings and a tab for nearby. So I guess I can't really call this a comprehensive review of the new tracker because it's continuously going to be updated and improved over the next who knows how long. But for now, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Make sure to leave questions for Q&A in the comments. I'll answer them tomorrow. I'll see you then.